podcast where this week as you can see it is just me um for those of you that don't have twitter uh julian did tweet out that he's taking some sorry there's going to be a lot of that happening the dogs do not listen to me when julian is not in the house so there will be barking there will be dog fighting there will be peach relentlessly kissing him uh but julian had tweeted um the other day he is uh he's having a hard time right now and um he would love to be here, but it's important that he takes some time and takes care of himself. And, um, yeah, he, he, Julian's okay. Uh, all of your well wishes have been really appreciated for him. Um, but it's sometimes you got to take care of yourself. So I'm just going to have Jenna chill time, <laughs> just like Julian would do for me someday if I needed to just, you know, shut off. So, uh, my apologies for those of you that come here for fire segues and Julian time. Uh, hopefully he'll be back soon. Um, and please bear with me because this is obviously the first time I've ever done the podcast alone. Julian's never done the podcast alone. We've never done the podcast without each other. So uh, my segues are not going to be fire at all. <laughs> but this podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. Uh, whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make it with Squarespace. If Squarespace is good enough for Keanu Reeves, John Malkovich, and musician Leon Bridges, it's damn good enough for you. You know, a dream is just a great idea that doesn't have a website yet. Make it a reality at squarespace.com slash Jenna Julian. Um, it's also brought to you by our OG sponsor, MeUndies. MeUndies is cutting into your legs too loose, super sweaty. That's been my underwear situation forever until I found MeUndies. <laughs> MeUndies are the best, most comfy underwear you'll ever own, and your butt will love you. Made from a sustainably sourced, naturally soft fabric that is three times softer than cotton. They're the ultimate feel-good undies for when you just want to feel naked but not be naked. Uh, <laughs> so you can go to MeUndies.com slash Jenna Julian. That's MeUndies.com slash Jenna Julian. Uh, they're also backing themselves. MeUndies is so sure you will love their underwear. They offer 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't love your first pair, get a full refund right now. You get 20% off your first pair and free shipping. You get 20% off free shipping, 100%, 100 satisfaction guaranteed. MeUndies.com slash Jenna Julian. Thank you so much, sponsors. Um, and also with Squarespace, sorry, my bad. I'm not good at this. This is Julie's job. <laughs> he does this all the time. He's so good at it. Uh, squarespace.com slash Jenna Julian. Uh, you will save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Squarespace.com slash Jenna Julian. Thank you so much sponsors, uh, for always being there for us, even in the weirdest of weeks when it's uh, just Jenna chill time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I asked on the Jenna Julian Twitter, what you guys would like if I were to just sit down and sort of have a chill cast. And you guys tweeted a, a bunch of things at me. Uh, it seemed like a lot of you guys wanted like life advice and stuff like that, which I am more than happy to do. I also gathered together some Craigslist misconnections for you because although that was like such a joke, um, a lot of you guys have been requesting those. They're very difficult to find because some of them are just downright sexual and creepy in nature. Uh, but I did find some. Some of them, I, like, I don't think I can read them all the way through. Uh, but we can do that somewhere in the middle, you know, just have a nice little break. Talk about some misconnections in case, you know, you out there and you just you miss the love of your life somewhere on a bus or some shit. Um, but. In terms of this weekend, basically, uh, we've just, uh, I like, I've been sort of taking care of Julian, and he's going through a lot right now, and uh, we sat down and watched a movie for, like, the first time in forever, because a lot of you guys know that we have been heavily, heavily fucking with PUBG, which is a video game that we play on PC, and we stream often on Twitch, um, but... 
that's like what we do every night. You know, it's like for years for me, it was like, oh, you know, you get your dinner ready and then you're going to go watch Survivor. You're going to go watch your favorite show or some reality show or whatever. Just something like, you know, lighthearted and we don't do that anymore. <laughs> like we'll catch up for like on TV shows when we're getting ready to like go to bed, which is why we end up like with all these episodes of one show to just binge watch at once because we'll just miss weeks in a row because we'll just be playing PUBG and uh, we haven't been playing for quite some time. And also part of that is we don't watch any movies like ever because if we're going to watch something, we'll binge watch like a show we miss a bunch of episodes of and we don't want spoilers and stuff. And it's never movies. But um, I know a lot of you guys tell me too, you're like, Sometimes your videos are really silly and funny or like the podcast made you laugh because you're having a hard day and you just like need that. And we did that with Julian this weekend. He was like, I want to watch Coco. And I was like, hell yeah, we haven't watched a movie in forever, dog. <laughs> so I feel like a lot of you guys make fun of me, too, because I just don't I don't see movies like I'm not going to see a movie unless I know it's like amazing because I don't want to invest that much time, but I will invest, you know, 50 or 60 hours into the curse of Oak Island without any regret or problem. But if it's a movie, somehow I deem it as a waste of time if it's bad or if I don't like it. But we watched Coco and that was just such a nice movie. And I re I like, I couldn't tell you the last movie that I watched. I really don't know, but it was something animated. It was probably like, I don't know. I don't want to embarrass myself. I don't know, Thor? I don't know. I don't remember the last time I went to the movies. I don't know. Is that bad? I think that's bad. But anyways, um, you guys tweeted a lot of stuff at me. And you're really sweet for doing that. Um, because who the fuck has a podcast by themselves? <laughs> you feel me, dog? Like, what is this? It's just going to be Jen is chill time. Because usually when Julian's here... He dictates all the rules. Like, I'm not allowed to use this voice more than a certain amount. Or else he gets really upset and pissed off. And the dogs aren't allowed to sit on the table. But guess who's sitting on the table? All fucking three of them. It's absolutely spectacular. I love having them here. They're really well behaved. <laughs> <laughs> They're really well behaved when they have mats and things to sit on. And little cushy happiness. Uh, but if they're on the ground right now, Kermit would be scream crying. And Marbles will be barking at the door because they don't listen to me. Right, guys? But Daddy's not here. We get to do whatever we want. Just podcast together. But I'll just jump into some of the stuff that you guys wanted to know, I guess. Because, I mean, as much as I'd love to have a system where you could call in, I don't, I don't, we don't have that. You don't have anything to do that. You know, there's no way for you to do that without calling my personal cell phone. And I think that would create some problems. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, this question is from Kay Boutye. Talk about retaining your youth as an adult woman. I feel like it's so easy for men to, quote, act like children when they're out of their 20s. But for women, we're expected to grow up so soon. I feel like this would be such an interesting conversation topic. Um, all of these questions are like, <laughs> I have to think for a second, retaining your youth as an adult woman. Okay. I don't like, I'm not trying to spill tea or anything right now, but I was watching a person on YouTube who is slightly older than I am. Uh, she's a woman and like, I feel like you do this like multiple times throughout your life, right? You compare yourself to your peers, people in your same age group. And I'm 31 years old. And a lot of the people my age are, the well, that I know are like married, they have kids or like, you know, the people I grew up with or went to college with or, uh, you know, take themselves very seriously. They take their careers very seriously, their jobs, their lives. And this person that I was watching on YouTube is like not that much older than me. But just like her whole demeanor, her whole everything is completely different than mine, which is really nice and really cool. But I also think that some of my friends or people that I've known in the past, like they're sort of always like that, you know, like the the girl in your school that was like 
<laughs> the head of her sorority or like, you know, took some some something really seriously. Those people grow up to be serious adults. And, you know, a lot of people like myself included, like might be immature for a while. You might be like a, a crazy person for a little bit, but, you know, you sort of level out as you get older. And I am really, I, I understand the expectation of women needed to, to grow up and that we do in our society give men this like leeway to sort of fuck around because they're always just going to be dummies. That's sort of what our culture teaches us, you know? And I do feel that pressure that, grown women need to act like grown women. But I just totally think that it's a state of mind. And retaining your youth, to answer your question, I think it's just a mindset. Because I looked at, at people like the woman I was talking about on YouTube, or other women that I see on YouTube, and I'm just like, man, <laughs> you're great. And you're wonderful. But I just do not. That's not me. That could never be me. And I look at women like my mom. And I'm like, there's just people in this world that will never take life that seriously. Like, you know what I mean? Like it, this, it's just a spiritual thing. It's something that's inside of you that will always keep you young no matter what. And I think it's just a mindset and a state of mind. And it comes with rolling with the punches of life and just like riding the wave, letting the wind blow you, just being a little bit more of a free spirit. And I do think that that's something you can learn how to do, you know, uh, for all the people that are wound up really tight and they don't want to be. I think that you can sort of learn how to be a little more open minded or free spirited because I, I like I was a weird kid. Pretty sure my mom can vouch for that. But like I, I'm very cautious and very rational. But, you know, as I've gotten older, I'm like, you know, what doesn't fucking matter is like, you know, a laundry list of things. I think that it's something you can become, you know, even if you're a grown woman and you have grown woman responsibilities, you can still become a little more like, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck everything. Um, but I do understand that pressure of being a grown woman versus a grown man. And I do think we give men in, in our, our American culture a little more leeway to just be like, dummy dum dum sometimes at a certain age but also in Los Angeles it's a little bit of a different thing because people just never grow up here that's like their <laughs> that's their solution to everything is like a lot of people just never grow up <laughs> oh that's a weird weird thing to say oh man but yeah I mean to answer your question I think you can identify that as a pressure and you can be that or you can just always sort of have a, a free spirit about you while still accomplishing your responsibilities. You know what I'm saying? It's a state of mind. And the less fucks you give, the easier life is, I promise you. <laughs> oh, okay. Emily Purse says, I love when you talk about growing up in upstate New York. Like all of your fave places and food. And your fave memories. My favorite places and food. When I was growing up in Rochester, New York, we didn't have like a lot of chain restaurants and stuff. Like we had fast food places like McDonald's, Burger King and places like that. And uh, we had a Italian restaurant called Mario's, I think it was, which was like lit as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like probably not the best food in the world, but like on a Saturday night, like oh, dad's house weekend, we go and fuck Mario's. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get some spaghetti. Um, no idea if it still exists there. Also, there was a, I obviously ate meat growing up and, uh, one place that we used to go to as well, like more in high school was this place called country suite, which is really delicious fucking fried chicken and waffles and that kind of thing. That was sort of my first exposure to the deliciousness that is fried chicken and waffles. And we make alternate versions of them now, which are pretty delicious. But country suite was fucking bomb because we didn't have... Waffle House or Roscoe's or any of that stuff. Um, also, a place that holds so many of my memories. I don't know how big of a chain restaurant it was or if it still exists, but it was a Mexican restaurant called Chi Chi's. <laughs> and I feel like there were so many birthdays at Chi Chi's. It was just like one of those things where it's the, just that restaurant in town where you're like, fuck it, we'll go to Chi Chi's. They would give us these paper sombreros and like it was just like 
slightly above shitty Mexican food, like not great, not the, it's just solid. You know what I mean? And we would just go to Chi Chi's when the fuck ever, you know? And I feel like growing up too, like we, my parents had joint custody of us basically. So we'd split time. And, uh, every other weekend we would go to my dad's and now as an adult, I realize like my mom would always cook for us and like do all the stuff that a mom would do, you know, like have us on a, a real schedule routine. And then when we go to dad's house and we would stay up late and watch cartoons and go to Chi Chi's. And I realized now as an adult, that's like, think of all the times when you just don't want to feed yourself at all. Like I'm so hungry, but I'm not going to cook. I'm not going to do shit right now. This, that is like, it's, and I'm sure someday I'll get there too, but it's like, fuck it. We're going to Chi Chi's. You know what I'm saying? That was Chi Chi's. And there were such good memories to be had there. Um, I'm sure you guys all have a restaurant like that that you can share with me because I'm really interested. I don't know if Chi Chi's still exists, <laughs> but oh man, my, my dad would let us get like virgin strawberry daiquiris and stuff. And we're like, oh, this is so naughty. Like they give it to you in a margarita glass. This is fucking wild that house is wild and he would let us stay up late and eat snacks like cheese and salami and a whole sleeve of oreos if we wanted to like basically if we just wanted to eat ourselves sick we could but we didn't you know but the option was there which was great that's what dads are for you know what i'm saying <laughs> I'm kidding uh idolize underscore ari asks as a psych major i'd love to hear about what valuable information you learned slash experiences you had during your education although that may not be as interesting to everyone who isn't as nerdy as i am so a lot of people want to ask like questions and a lot of people ask me on twitter too um a lot of you guys are curious about college like education questions which is interesting to me because i'm now like 10 years removed, <laughs> you know, like somebody could probably give you a better answer than I could give you. And it's just my experience. Um, valuable information you learned and experiences you had during your education. So I think this is so stupid, but I feel like the most valuable lessons that I learned throughout my education were all experiences. Like they weren't, you know, I don't remember specific lessons that I learned were like, Dude, I've retained this knowledge for 10 fucking years, man. Changed my life. Like, absolutely not. I absolutely do not remember how to do all those statistics classes that I took. Half the math that I learned is just gone. Goodbye. Do not know how to do it anymore. And uh, a lot of the electives that I took, don't remember. I couldn't even tell you some of the classes that I took in college. Don't remember. But what I do remember is... um. Like my internships that I had, I think played a big, important role in shaping me uh, at that age and playing sports and being so dedicated to that team at that time. And like, you know, playing a role in a team, I think plays a big part in your life. And maybe that's not a sports team. Maybe that's you're, you're into music or you're into a certain club or art or whatever it is that you're into. Um Learning that experience as a young person, I feel like, played a much bigger role in the rest of my life than my specific classes or specifically what I learned. And I also felt like I had a, a college experience, you know, like everyone sort of teaches you that undergraduate's going to be this like you're going off to college and like you're going to figure out who you are and you're going to discover yourself and you're going to make friends to last for the rest of your life and like. Sorry. Like some of that is true. Some of that is true. Like I, for me personally, you know, I did walk away from college with a, a handful of friends that I'll probably always be friends with. And I did have some experiences that were awesome, but I did not leave undergraduate knowing anything <laughs> like that that I feel like is like the the dream that your parents sort of sell you and that 
you know, <laughs> like for my mom or my dad, for example, going to college was this thing where maybe necessarily their parents didn't go to college. This is like something that for our parents' generation was like the coolest fucking thing ever. Finally, you know, more people can afford to go to college and have an education and have an experience with their peers at that age. And it's fucking rad. And they really do discover who they are. But for our generation, it was sort of like, well, now that I'm done with 12 years of school, let's go do four fucking more, you know, because that's what I need to do in order to get an entry level job in this world. Like there is no competing. I mean, there is there's totally exceptions, but you know what I'm saying? That's sort of the expectation. And so our parents were giving this us this romantic idea of education, of it being like this wonderful time where you discover yourself and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like I left undergraduate just like fucking confused as hell, like didn't know what I wanted to do, didn't really know anything except that my education wasn't done. And that was sort of what drove me to apply to graduate school and to pursue psychology, sports psychology, because that's what my life consisted of at the time. And I was very interested in it. And I definitely would have enjoyed working in that field, I believe, if I hadn't taken a weird path over here. Um, but it I definitely didn't leave undergraduate being like, I'm ready for the world, <laughs> you know, like, and I feel like that's across the board now. So many young people leave undergraduate almost more fucking confused than they were on their way in, you know, like, cause on your way in, you're like, I'm going to have the greatest four years ever. And then you're like, dude, this is a lot of work. And I don't, I don't know what to do. And I, no one's accepting my resume. I don't like, you know, it's kind of a fucking mess. Um, but my, I think the most important experiences that I had were, uh, social, like learning where you fit into a group, what your role is, uh, that kind of thing. Like, what kind of person are you? Are you a leader? Do you like to be led? Are you like, if you're me, like, are you the person that really just doesn't take stuff that seriously? Like, that was an important lesson for me to learn about myself was that sometimes if I don't deem something to be like the biggest fucking deal, even if everyone else around me is like, I'm just going to have fun, you know? And I did that. I did. <laughs> it's a good thing to learn, you know? Um, and just, I don't know, that stupid stuff really isn't that important. And um, I remember going to school. I was 17 when I graduated high school. And I have a late birthday. And I went to school. And I celebrated my 18th birthday by laying on my dorm bed alone doing nothing because I hadn't made any friends yet. And I had a roommate that... <laughs> we're both like, you know, 18 and 17. And I'm super excited. We lived in a double. So it was just me and her. And I'm like, I'm so excited to get to know my roommate. Like, hopefully she's like my best friend It's going to be super great. She walks in with her boyfriend. This is no shade to her. She was a really nice girl. And we wound up, we were friends, but like we made great roommates because we weren't like the closest friends ever, you know? Um, so this isn't shade to her, but like she walks in and she's like, this is my boyfriend, blank. And I'm like, sick, dude, nice to meet you. And I was like, wait a second, <laughs> like, how old are you? And he was like, I'm like 32 or whatever, which to me, I'm like that age now. But when you're like 17 or 18, you're like, dude, what is this fucking grown man doing here, dog? Like, are you okay? Like, does somebody sign you in? Like, are you supposed to be here? Like, are you a teacher? <laughs> She's like, this is my boyfriend. I'm like, sick, dude, fucking great. But he apparently got kicked out of the dorm that day because he had already tried to smuggle in alcohol into my roommate's uh, belongings, like into her boxes, which apparently a lot of people do. And they just like are – it's not that we had a dry campus. Uh, my college was sort of like, you know, a couple of buildings within the city, two of which were dorms. And like only out-of-state people were guaranteed housing for two years only and then after that. But that's what I liked about the school is that you're going to end up living in the city and you're not on a campus because I never had that sort of like – I never wanted to be in a campus thing. I don't know. It just made me feel weird. I just wanted to live in a city, you know. So – he gets kicked out like the first day, the moving in day. And I'm like, oh shit, I'm super sorry that your boyfriend got kicked out and he can't come back because he's like 30 and just tried to smuggle in alcohol. Like, I get it. We're in college. Like, I know we're probably going to fucking drink and shit, but like, holy shit, man, your boyfriend just got kicked out. 
So it wound up being like a sort of whatever thing because she would leave Wednesday afternoons and return Monday mornings because she would go stay at his place since he wasn't allowed to come visit her. So I basically had a single dorm, you know, Wednesday night, Thursday day, Friday day, Saturday, uh, Sunday, and then she would come back. So that was the other reason why we got along so great was because we didn't really have to see each other that much. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, anyways, I feel like all of my, my best experiences, my most memorable experiences really had nothing to do with school or figuring out who I was. And maybe that's not everyone's experience. A lot of people, like I'm sure if you ask my brother, probably parts of his experience were he had great mentors or uh, teachers or something. And I, I had like pretty good teachers, pretty decent teachers, but I didn't have like a mentor that sort of changed my life or perspective until I went to graduate school which was um, I had applied specifically because I really admired this woman and her work. And I, she just was like everything to me. And then she wound up being that for me. You know what I mean? Like I, it's like meeting one of your idols sort of, but I didn't idolize her, but I really looked up to her in a professional sense. And I got accepted into the school and just like walking in the first day and like seeing her in real life was like, it's fucking magical. And then you're like, all right, well, what's the catch? Maybe she's like, you know, one of these professors that think they're really fucking important, which I had plenty of those. And, you know, the first thing they do and your class is like assign you four of their own books that they've written. And you're just like, damn, dude, fuck. Isn't there some other important stuff out there that maybe you didn't write that would be valuable to our experience as students? But, you know, whatever. I'll buy all of your fucking books. She wasn't like that. She was even more wonderful as I got a chance to work with her, which was incredible. Um, so I guess I hope that for people going off to school, you keep your expectations realistic. Like maybe you lay on your dorm bed on your 18th birthday and have no friends because you haven't really found your tribe yet. And you will. But that does take some effort. And uh, <laughs> you don't have this super romantic idea that you're going to come out with the best friends you've ever had in your life, you have your life all figured out, and you have applied to a job that's going to pay you a comfortable salary that you're going to stay at for the rest of your life. Like, that's not that's not a thing really anymore, you know, maybe for a handful of people, but I'd say the majority of people coming out of undergraduate are either like, okay, well, I either I need to go to graduate school because everything's still outrageously competitive with this level of education, or I need to take some time off, go work, I need to take a job that has has nothing to do with what I studied in school and try and figure my way out, you know, or way up, sorry. And I feel like that's becoming more and more common because uh, an undergraduate degree is no longer this like, all right, you're solidified now in this field. It's sort of like you have a basic understanding of how to be an adult, sort of. You're still going to have to learn how to do your taxes and take care of yourself all on your own. But uh, it's sort of just like a welcome to adulthood. Get fucked like everybody else. <laughs> Um, but yeah, sorry, that was a very long winded answer of information and experiences that I learned, none of which were really academic. I guess the only thing I did learn that was academic was when I was confused about what major I wanted to pursue. I asked my mom, my advisor, I'm like, you know, what should I do? And they were like, well, take one class of each. So I was interested in either like media and that kind of thing or psychology. So I did. I took one class in each. I took a mass media class and an intro, like an intro to psychology. And the people in my media class were so fucking insufferable that I left. I mean, I finished the class. I got a grade. But I was like, never again. Let's do psychology. Done. Call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like a lot of people stress about what they should major in and, you know, that that's going to define the rest of your life. And I mean, I'm sure it could, but it also couldn't, you know, as long as you're studying something that you enjoy and you like, I don't think that that's a waste of time or money as long as you're getting an education for it. You know, like I, I, there's more to debate there about whether or not colleges should be as expensive as they are or for certain things like it's a weird area if you know what I mean. But as long as you're enjoying yourself and you're getting what you want out of that experience and you're learning something that's interesting to you, I feel like for a lot of people, you're going to leave school and you just, you're going to have to figure stuff out anyways. So might as well have a degree in something that was really fucking fantastic. You know what I'm saying? <laughs>
<laughs> like I've had people tweet at me about art school and I don't know the first thing about art school, you know? So I feel like there's probably someone that could give you a better answer than I could. But for something liberal artsy, you got a psychology degree. Fuck it, man. I don't care. Let's go study. It. It'll be great. I'll figure it out later. Maybe that's terrible advice, but that's what I did. And I found it to be really enjoyable. I don't know. I don't know. Should I know? Anyways, I've answered all of like three questions, but guess what? I don't have a fire segue. <laughs> but this week's podcast has been sponsored by Squarespace. I'm so bad at this. Oh, I feel so inadequate without my Julie. Oh, Squarespace is good enough for Keanu Reeves, John Malkovich, and, and just so many other people. It's good enough for you. Okay? Just like a, a liberal arts degree. It's good enough for you. <laughs> that doesn't even make any sense. I really need Julian. You know, a dream is just a great idea that doesn't have a website yet. Make it a reality. It's squarespace.com slash Jenna Julian. Their templates make creating an online identity super easy, and every template is a starting point for a wide range of projects. Plus, it's all in one platform. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever, and Squarespace is the most amazing, award-winning, 24-7 customer support. You won't be fumbling around wondering how the hell to get your website done, because you can call them at 2 a.m. when you're eating pizza. Me. You know, keep dreaming, but make it a reality with a website from Squarespace. Head to squarespace.com slash Jenna Julian and get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. That's squarespace.com slash Jenna Julian. And this podcast is also brought to you by me undies, which I'm wearing right now. They're like a, a white rosy pattern. They're really cute. You want to feel naked, but not naked. Get yourself MeUndies, the ultimate feel-good underwear made from a, sus a sustainably sourced, natural, soft fabric that's three times softer than cotton. MeUndies will be the most comfy undies you will ever own. And I can vouch for that because my entire underwear drawer is full of MeUndies. <laughs> Girls, for you, they come in tons of different colors, styles, solids, lace, boy shorts, a uh, bikini thong. There's something for everyone. I, you know, like the expensive Victoria's Secret ones with like the lace and their thong. MeUndies makes those, except they're softer and they last longer. You know what I'm saying? And for guys, the diamond seam pouch gives you the stuff, the, your stuff, the support it needs without feeling too tight. I'm going to take their word for that. And uh, I, I just, I love my MeUndies. They're pretty fantastic. Julian loves his too. And my favorite is when our um, patterns match each other. Because we're gross like that, you know. Sometimes it's fun to just have matching underwear. <laughs> oh, MeUndies is so sure you will love their underwear. They offer a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't love your first pair, get a full refund. Right now, Ding Fam, get 20% off your first pair and free shipping. There's a no-brainer to go to MeUndies.com. 20% off, free shipping, 100% satisfaction guarantee. What are you waiting for to get your 20% off and shipping free and their 100% satisfaction guarantee? To be the softest underwear you've ever, you've ever owned, MeUndies.com slash Jenna Julian. That's MeUndies.com slash Jenna Julian. Thank you so much, sponsors. And thank you for putting up with me because I'm not as good as Julian. This is why we've, we've established this relationship with Julian. He reads the sponsors because he really just has the gift. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, back to y'all's questions. I'm such a blabbermouth. I've literally answered three questions. Wrap it up, Jenny. You can do it. Concise it down. How about you talk about all of your favorite memories of Julian? So if he's not doing okay at the moment, he can watch the podcast and smile. Ow, I'm going to cry. I, like, there's too many, like, favorite moments of Julian. There's just too many. Like, <laughs> he's just the best. He's just the best. Like, he's just the best. I'm trying to think of, like, one or two. He did something funny the other day that I wish I could remember. I don't know. It's just I'm, I'm like, 
flooded with everything fun and funny. And these last like few days have been really difficult because as you like you a lot of you guys watch Julian's vlogs and uh like I think you have a a pretty solid understanding of us as people for the most part. Um and we spend a lot of our time just like laughing. Just laughing at like stupid stuff, making each other laugh and it's been really difficult to not hear Julian laugh for days, you know? And for a lot of people, when when stuff happens in their life, that could be a really long time when you just don't hear someone laugh or, like, see them smile. So that's that sucked, you know, to not hear him laugh. So if you guys have anything fun or funny to send over to Julian, please do that. Because, you know, when you're going through something weird and hard, this is what we did when we watched Coco. It's like, you know, you have these moments of like, I need to be sad right now. And then you have these moments of like, I just need a distraction. So if you could just distract him for a little bit for the next time when he logs onto Twitter and there's a bunch of funny gifts, that'd be fantastic. Because I do think everyone just needs moments of distraction in this like, the common waves, you know, of this like, so you're okay, and then you're not okay, and then you're okay, and then you're not okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, boy. My Julie. I don't know. There's just too much to pick. I love everything about Julian. Uh, I hope everything's okay, and a good idea could be what are your plans for the future and what you would likely be doing if YouTube didn't work out. I feel like that's a pretty common question that people ask me. Um, to answer the second part, I would probably be working in – some context in my field in sports psychology, but I'd probably be working with kids. I mean, I spent a lot of time in my life working uh, with kids. I worked at the Boys and Girls Club for years. Um, it's like, I don't know. I, I was a camp counselor before that for all the way through college. And then after college, I worked at the Boys and Girls Club and stuff. And I, it's just like, I don't know. It's just something that's easy for me to to, to do. I feel like when I was a kid, you know, something I would y scream yell at my mom was like, sometimes you forget how hard it is to be a kid. Like, I remember saying this to my mom. I'm like, you get to go to work every day and, like, eat what you want for lunch. And, like, you know, you get to do something that you like doing. I just have to go to school every day and people talk to me. And it's so boring and I hate it, you know. <laughs> and, like, I remember multiple times in my life having those moments of like, I need an adult to just remember how much sometimes it just sucks to be a kid and not like a child, like as a young human, just like trying to make sense of everything. And like at the same time, feeling like all these firsts that happen to you, like the first time that your friend lies to you or like, you know, something stupid like that. It's just you've never had that happen before. So everything sucks all the time. You know, you're like going through this terrifying, awful roller coaster and everything that you're learning is getting harder. Like it used to just be like I'm building blocks today and like coloring a coloring book. And now all of a sudden I'm doing shit and I fucking I wasn't paying attention the other day and now I'm totally lost and I'm fucked right now and then I have to go to gym later and we're playing soccer and I'm not gifted at it and it makes me feel inadequate I also don't like my gym outfit and I'm not in a class with any of my friends it sucks you know it's like a series of suck and like firsts and then a series of like feeling really good about yourself and then not good about yourself and I don't know <laughs> I just feel like it, it when I worked with kids, it wasn't because I've had so many, many moments of like remembering and really being in touch with myself when I was a kid and like thinking about how frustrated I was at some of those things. It wasn't difficult for me to work with kids for as long as I did or will in the future because it's like I get it, man. Like I get it. I'm not trying to get you to be a fucking a tiny adult. I'm not. Like, you're going through some suck stuff, okay? And your pain is valid and your frustration is valid. You're in some suck stuff, but it's going to be okay, you know? Um, kids are also very easy to distract. <laughs> like what I'm saying about Julian. Like, sometimes you're sad and sometimes you need times to be sad and other times you need times to be distracted and just have some fun for a little bit. So, anyways, I would probably be working with kids to answer your question. Kermit, thank you for snoring. Oh, he's, like, out, man. 
Um, and my plans for the future, uh, someone had tweeted at me. I feel like, you know, for the most part, all of you guys are really, really, really nice to Julian and I about our relationship. And I don't know, I made a video forever ago, years ago, about how marriage isn't super important to me. And uh, I, I don't know, it's just not something that I care about. And all that matters is the commitment to me. And that could change in the future or I don't, it's just whatever. I don't know. I just don't care. It's it's not like top of my priority list, you know, like top of my priority list any given day is like wake up and feed the dogs and like put my contacts in. And then the rest of it, I'm like, this is fine. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense. I don't know. It's just not a super priority to me. Um, but for us, we'd like to buy a house and have that be like our roots. I think once we do that, we can start, you know, doing all the rest of the things in life that we'd like to do, but we'd like to put down some roots and actually have a place that we own that we can work out of. Uh, yeah. I think for the future, that's, that's our short and long-term goal is to get a house, move in, which is no easy process and then see sort of where life takes us from there. So that's sort of what I'm focusing on right now. And Julian as well. I mean, I'm not going to speak for Julian. He's not here, but I think so. I think we're on the same page. Uh, Lindsay Woe asks, advice on balancing things in your life. Like for me, it's school, sports, friends, and online things like Twitch and online friends. And I'm not balancing it too well at the moment. Oh, girl, you are preaching to the choir. I will say one thing. I don't know how old you are, but... When I was younger, I had limited sort of online capabilities because there was no – like YouTube had just started and it wasn't really a popular thing. And I wasn't making YouTube videos like when I was in college. Um, it was like I might watch an episode of Flavor of Love, you know. Sorry for aging myself, but it's true. <laughs> like there was only so much I could do that wasn't like texting someone or talking on the phone with someone or like – I don't know. Like we go, me and my roommate would go on this website called Stupid Videos. And I – maybe this is a better answer. I'm getting there. Bear with me. <laughs> me and my roommate used to go on this website called Stupid Videos. And it was just – it was sort of like Evom's world but like stupider because they were all just stupid videos. So basically like what YouTube – was in its infancy. Stupid videos was that, but like you couldn't upload to it. You know, it was just, it was a, a big collection of stupid videos. <laughs> and we would go on there and we would spend fucking hours sitting in my room, dying laughing. And my best friend, Jackie, who you guys have seen in one of my videos, like I went to her wedding, whatever. And, um, she just has like a different sense of humor. Like, you know, people that don't like get internet humor or like they don't, they, they just have a different sense of humor than you do. And uh, she would come in there and be like, you guys have been watching this shit for hours, for hours. I don't get it. And we're like, dude, you have to watch this. This is the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen. And it's like a bunch of guys running in an inflatable car into traffic, like not hurting themselves. They're just running it onto a main road, whatever. She's like, I don't get it. That's not funny. That's stupid. And I'm like, yeah, I know. It's stupid videos. It's great. You should come in and watch with us sometime. To a lot of people, that is a gigantic fucking waste of time. But what I feel like happened was I found my true passion in life, which was just laughing at shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's a little ironic now that I, I mean, went through graduate school. I did all of that. And what do I do? I watch hours of stupid videos. And I participate in the making of the stupid videos. So in theory, was it a waste of time? Mm? I don't know. I would say in terms of balancing things, what I used to do was priority number one was always making sure that everything actually got done. So if I had a paper or something like I, I'm a procrastinator. I've always been a procrastinator, but like a, a not a terrible one. You know, I'm not going to turn in a piece of shit. Like I'm going to work on it. I'm going to make sure it gets done. But like I'm not that kid that has it done four fucking days in advance. Okay. I'm not like I was never like that. <laughs> no, no shame if you are good for you. I just wasn't. But like I would reward myself 
you know, I would work on my paper for a couple hours and then I would reward myself by watching like an episode of Flavor of Love. You know what I mean? It was sort of a give and take system. And I feel like if you're looking for that balance, just make sure if your stuff is done, it's time to do whatever the fuck you want. And none of that time to me is wasted. And for for you, maybe it's Twitch and hanging out with your friends online and doing that stuff. And trust me, there's plenty of procrastination that can go on. You can do it here and there. But if your stuff is done, go enjoy yourself and do whatever it is that you like, as long as it's not hurting anybody or, you know, it's putting negative shit into the world. Like if it's watching people on Twitch or like painting or laughing at stupid videos like it's your free time go do what you want but i'd say use those as a tool to reward yourself to get your shit done you know what i'm saying and try and create that system for yourself otherwise nothing gets done and then you get in that cycle of like feeling bad and then i didn't do my stuff but oh i'm sitting here doing this instead you know what i mean like even as an adult, I find myself still doing this. Like when I get my video done on Wednesdays, I'm like, sick. Yes. All right. It's uploaded. It's time to play a game of Hearthstone, baby. Wanted to play all day, baby. I still do it. I don't know. It works for me. But I mean, also I, to give you a little bit of perspective though, too, like school, sports, friends, online things like Twitch and online friends. That's a lot. You know, you're a talented young lady. And I promise you, like, later in life, sometime when it's not as much, you'll be like, wow, I really was a magician back then. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I balance things like a relationship, taking care of animals, taking care of my house, cleaning, cooking, those kinds of things. Like, the balancing never goes away, but, like, I promise you that the some of the the stress of it, you know, gets a little easier, if that makes sense. I don't know about kids. I feel like that gets way harder. So it gets easier for a little while and then it gets way harder. Whatever. You get the point. <laughs> oh, you guys are funny. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> I need some advice from my Aunt Jenna about how to motivate myself. Okay. Here's something interesting. There's been in, in sports psychology, there's a lot of really interesting studies on, well, everything, because all of it's fascinating to me. But uh, motivation is one of those interesting things where there's a lot of literature on. And it's a really interesting thing to study because, like, where does this thing come from? Why, why are some people more motivated at some things than other things? And, you know, what makes motivation happen? What motivates you? So sort of a profound thing <laughs> that has a lot of answers. But to me, I think a tangible piece of advice that I could give you for motivation is maybe not like all of the internal things that sort of, I think that you probably have to discover for yourself. But something that helps me every day is to just get a positive ball rolling. So like in the morning, if it's just like, I'm going to make myself a smoothie, you know, maybe you have a leftover piece of pizza and you could eat that pizza pizza. But like if I start my day off with like a, a smoothie, all right, good. I'm feeling good. Then maybe I'll take the dogs for a walk or on the block. All right. Well, now that I've gotten those things done, I'm feeling pretty good about myself. And then you end up doing multiple more things that are at least productive in the right direction than you would have if you'd laid in bed and like looked at Twitter and looked at Instagram and then like I'm talking about like a day off, not like a day we have to go to school or something. I don't know. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? If you get a positive ball rolling early in your day, the chances of you continuing to move that ball throughout the rest of your day and do things that you probably don't even want to do are much higher in my experience than the days when you just can't do a fucking thing. And those days serve a purpose. Trust me. They need to exist. They're totally there for a reason. Take those days and don't feel bad about them. But on the days when you'd like to get some stuff done, like just do one or two simple things in the morning and it will sometimes, hopefully for the most part, in my experience, they do translate into like a bigger snowball that snowballs in through the rest of your day to help you do more productive things throughout the day. I don't know. That's one of my only tangible pieces of advice for motivation because motivation is really complicated and there's a lot of cool stuff on the internet. You could read about it if you're interested. Um, I 
tips on becoming a vegan? Yeah. Um, I have a weird vegan journey, not really, but sort of. But like when when I first started, however long ago, eight, I don't fucking know, nine, eight years ago, it was uh, a plant based diet. I was eating plants, plant based diet. <laughs> like I was eating meat one day a week. And that was because I liked the way that it made me feel. I had done some research on my shitty internet that I had at the time, which, I mean, it took a very long time just to get limited information. Um, But yeah, I just did some research and I was like, that seems cool. I'd be interested in trying that. And I did. And then I would eat meat one day a week as like my cheat meal. And I felt great. I think that that was the beginning of my uh, plant-based diet because it was not ethically driven. And then time went on. I went back to eating meat and I also went back to not feeling very good. I think a lot of it just comes from like listening to your body and listening to what it needs and what feels good. And then as time went on, I was like, eating meat is really, it was making me feel weird. Like, uh, I think it's what's described as brain fog, but I, there were so many times when I told Julian, like, I can't think. I can't think. I don't have any thoughts. There's nothing, there's nothing there. Nothing is happening. I'm having no thoughts. It's really frustrating. And I was also feeling pretty tired. And I had tried being vegetarian, which didn't really work for me. It made me feel also tired and not great. Um, I don't know why. And it, we're talking about very small levels of difference and tired because then, you know, taking vitamins and supplements as well during all of this. Um, and then I finally watched sad stuff. And Julian didn't go through this process. He's probably the only person that is a vegan that I've seen successfully transition and not go through that process. But for me, I was like happy being plant-based. I really liked that. But I didn't really see a problem with eating meat. And, you know, I was raised eating meat and everyone around me ate meat and dairy and didn't really see a problem. And then I watched the sad stuff. And I only needed like a day of it. And what I did was, it's actually so embarrassing. Julian, I think, I forget where he went. He was somewhere, gone all day. And I forced myself to watch like, you know, a solid afternoon, like a solid three or four hours worth of just sad animal stuff. And I sat there on the couch. And I was sobbing and sobbing and sobbing and sobbing and sobbing. And that was it. Like, I haven't seen a lot of the vegan documentaries. I haven't seen a lot of the, like, you know, more famous movies about it. And that was it. That was all I needed. And I was like, I don't, I just don't, I don't want to contribute to that. And just stopped. And that was it. And so I'd say if you want to become a vegan, A, if you have a choice about what you're eating, watch some sad shit. If you are a teenager, I get this question a lot. If you're a teenager whose family household, you know, is being shopped for by the your parents or something, I no one is mad at you for eating the food that is being provided for you. And if, if you're interested in, in not eating meat or anything like that, ha, you know, have conversations with your parents, but like understand that maybe your parents don't care that you want to be a vegan. Maybe, maybe they don't want to cater to that. And when someday, when you do have a choice about what you get to eat, you can make those choices when you're an adult, because food is a very personal thing. Food is also an expensive thing. And it's really difficult for some families to accommodate different diets, you know, especially since being vegan is a choice, whereas maybe uh, like Julian that has celiac disease. That's not a choice. Like you're, it, it's like being allergic to peanuts and your parents are like, eat these fucking peanuts. And you're like, mom, I'm going to die. Like if you would like to be a vegan and you're 13 years old and your parents won't help you do that and don't support you, you don't need to be upset at them. Just keep going, keep trying the best that you can keep learning and, and what someday when you have control over what you can eat and this is your money going into what you eat and your choices, you can make those choices. But you, I, I've read a lot of things like I, you know, I fucking hate my mom because she won't let me do this. And it's like, respect your mom always. Number one. Number two, your mom is like losing her fucking mind sometimes. OK, she's very overwhelmed. She loves you very much. She just wants to feed you the six recipes she knows how to make. Okay. You know, someday when you get to decide what goes into your body all the time, you can make those choices. But like, you don't need to hate your mom. Okay. 
she loves you. It's going to be okay. But other than that, if you do have a choice about what goes in your body and you're interested in becoming a vegan, I'd say watch some sad shit or uh, try some vegan recipes. Like Julian's way of becoming a vegan was watching me cook delicious food and being really jealous about it. So I'd say try cooking some stuff and just see that it's pretty delicious. And anything that you like to eat, you could probably make without animal products. And if you like it, get into it, watch some sad shit or not. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know. Those are my tips. And don't don't be frustrated with yourself. Like, just try your best. And your best is always good enough. When it comes to putting in effort and trying, there's like a lot of learning. I feel like as you get more into being a vegan, there's a lot of stuff you need to know about like what your body needs and how to take care of that and whatever. But like, if you're just trying, just know that you're going to make mistakes. You're going to fuck up. You're going to be confused. You're going to not know what to make. You're going to be like, I don't know what to do. Like it's a learning process and just do the best that you can be patient with yourself, have faith and that, you know, you're doing something that feels good for your body. If it does, it does. And if it doesn't, I don't know, you can figure something out. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Do what feels what's right for you. I don't know. That was a very long-winded answer. I'm very sorry. What do you do when you're in love with someone and they don't love you back, but you can't shake the crush? Please help. That was from Lexi. Oh, okay. Here's my advice. (laughs) Coming from personal experience, as someone that had a crush on a boy, like all of 6th and 7th grade, I think, I've told this story before about how I would wait at his locker every morning, before homeroom, and I had uh, 52 tardies in one quarter, which was only made up of like 60 or 70 days or something. I was late 52 of those days because I was waiting for this boy at his locker. And we were friends, but like he didn't like me back, you know? I basically just kept liking him until I found another boy. (laughs) Depending how old you are, I'd say if you are in middle school, Like, go ahead and like that boy. It it sucks. Like, I, it it sucks, you know, to like someone that doesn't like you back. There's nothing wrong with liking them. Like, it sucked when he, like, had a girlfriend and I was like, I wish he would ask me to dance, but he doesn't like me. It sucks. I'll still wait for him in his locker. But then eventually, like, I started to hang out with other boys and then I had another boyfriend, you know, and that was sort of the end of it. It was like, Hanging out with another boy or a person or whoever it is that you like. Just spend some time with other people because that boy or girl doesn't like you back. And you're allowed to still like them. Uh, That's where this not shaking the crush comes from. But I think that you will meet someone that makes it a lot easier for you to just be like, well, it's your loss because I've been waiting in your locker every single day. And you don't care that I'm here, but I've been here. It's not over. It still isn't. And then they kiss like in the notebook. But that that just never happens because he didn't like you back, you know. Me as fuck. Anyways. I say just keep living your life. Keep living your life. You can like them, but you'll find somebody that actually appreciates how much you like them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-mm-mm. There's so many questions. Tell us about how you've managed what seems like the healthiest, most perfect relationship with Julian. Well, first of all, me and Julian do not have a perfect relationship. I think you guys all know that for real. Like we have a serious, true relationship. We fight all the time, especially since we work together and we work in multiple capacities together. We stream live together. We have a podcast together. And he helps me every week with my videos and I'm, you know, often in his vlogs because his vlogs are about his life. So, uh, there's a lot of communication that goes into it. And I really feel like with me and Julian or in like a relationship in general, my perspective is that love grows over time and your strength in in your relationship with someone grows over time. So, you know, when we first started dating, there were a lot of obstacles, like the fact that I'm six years older than him. And there were things that I was like, 
this is stupid. Like, I, I'm too old for this shit, you know? And for him, it was like, you're too old for this shit. And I'm like, fuck, you, dumb stuff. You know what I'm saying? You have obstacles, but the more time that you spend together and spend working through those things or past those things, the stronger your relationship becomes. So I feel like we're at, we're at a very good point in our at least working, loving, living life situation where we've gotten a really good system of communication going where we can hear each other and we can talk about things as they're happening, not once someone is upset about them. And because we have to work together so many times during the week, like you can't let things fester or, you know, do that grow inside of you and make you upset and bottle up. Like it, you can't do that. We have to hash it out and get it figured out because, you know, we got a podcast later. I need to shoot a video or I'm filming a vlog today of the house. So can you please tell me what's going on and then we can work it out and move past it? Thank you. So in a way, I think that it has helped us to work together because, you know, we got to figure stuff out or else nothing's going to get done. Like you can go powder around the house and be upset and me too. And we can just pretend like we're in a big fight or we could just figure it out, you know? <laughs> so I feel like our relationship is really strong because we communicate with each other a lot. We have to, and we listen to each other and we spend a lot of time investing in each other, if that makes sense. Like some people are really good at stuff or have invested a lot of time into a certain hobby. I feel like it takes a lot of time and energy and work and love and care and watering and nurturing to get your relationship in a place that's really good. And it takes a lot to maintain that. And I think a lot of people would agree that are married or in serious long relationships is what I've heard from people is like, this is a lot of work and you got to work at it every single day. And it's really nice to have that work sort of pay off because you get to spend time with someone that you truly love and is wonderful to be around and is your best friend. You get your best friend out of that. And so, no, we, I mean, we don't have a, a perfect relationship at all. And we continue to go through things together that, that tests our bond and our friendship and our relationship and our working relationship. And as long as both parties are willing to hear each other and listen to each other and work through those things like as fast as you can, you know, not in an insensitively fast way, but I'm saying as opposed to letting them drag out, like we, like, we got to figure it out because we got to get back to the love and the happy because that's, that's all we're here for, right? Like we're here for the love and the happy. Let's, let's get back there. I need to know what, what's wrong in order for us to make that better and fix it. And it takes a lot of energy and effort to fix the things like it's not easy to have someone that you love sit there and tell you like everything that you're doing that's wrong and you're like damn it fuck shit you know and then you gotta work on those things or else you're not gonna be in a happy relationship <laughs> but I don't know I feel like it seems like I can imagine why it seems like we have a really great relationship because you guys do it's not like we sit and record our fucking arguments but i promise you there are plenty of them and we handle them in a, a civilized manner i mean sometimes you gotta just like yell and scream and fucking whatever it is but it's not dramatic you know it's like a there's plenty of vlogs i feel like where i'm at that level of like julian <laughs> that one you get there but like never in a place where you're gonna hurt each other like emotionally, verbally, you know what I mean? That's not productive. None of that. Um, but yeah, I feel like we spend a lot of time making sure that we're being the the best partner for each other that we can. And it's not a perfect relationship. It takes a lot of work. So that's the secret. It just takes a lot of fucking work, just like everything fucking else. You know what I'm saying? Kermit, right, Kermit? Kermit's a lot of work. He's taking a lot of pills lately. Ever since you dislocated your little kneecap, my poor bud. But yeah, I mean, that's, I guess, the podcast. I didn't get to any misconnections because I've been blabbering the entire time. I've also blacked out for most of this. I blouted. Because it's kind of hot in here and it's weird to just do a podcast by yourself. You know? <laughs> I really miss Julian. Hopefully he'll be back um, next week. But also... 
We're going to be patient with him. We're going to give Julian as much time as he needs. I hope you're on board with that. Uh, if for some reason he was not down to do this next week, I will find a guest host. So uh, if it comes to that, it won't just be another hour of me rambling. I appreciate all of you for putting up with me in this for this long, if you've made it this far. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you have anything funny or sweet or nice uh, to send Julian's way, I think that would be much appreciated. And um, we love him and miss him. And you, you know, know what's weird? weird? It's doing, doing a podcast for I want my yacht back! <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for watching, listening, and uh, I'll see you guys next week. Bye! <laughs>